Boa tarde a todos. Quero começar por agradecer a presença. Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank for the invitation addressed to me. I was not expecting so many people in this auditorium. I must, I must say, but this makes me feel encouraged uh, because this means that uh, these are interesting subjects for all of you. So thank you very much for being here. Well, our study was on conceptual demands when uh, teaching uh, sciences from first to ninth grade. So our problem, initial problem. What uh, we wanted to know was what is the level of conceptual demand in terms of sciences uh, at, uh, basic at uh, the basic uh, level of schooling, and how can different documents such as programs, curricular, uh, textbooks, and even teachers, how do they promote uh, higher levels of conceptual demand. This was our initial problem. So this problem led to uh, some research questions, which were to know what? To know uh, what uh, it was the conceptual demand in the documents coming from the ministry, like the program, uh, basic uh, demands, and so on. Uh, then uh, know the conceptual demand in textbooks, well, textbooks, as we know, are instruments used by the teachers and very important ones. And then also understand conceptual demand uh, at, to, at, uh, by teachers. Uh, so to what extent do teachers uh, respect uh, the pedagogical discourse, the official pedagogical discourse? So then we had two other questions. One was related to comparison. One, we, we studied the textbooks, we studied uh, the documents that teachers had, and then we wanted to compare to what extent are uh, teachers harmonized with the textbooks and the documents. Then the second, uh, the, the other point was what are the causes for the continuity or lack of continuity between the pedagogical, the official pedagogical discourse uh, that in uh, the, the textbooks uh, and uh, by teachers and the consequences uh, of that. So summarizing the study, I will say we had two main contexts, the official one, uh, the official context uh, related to the documents coming from the ministry, and then the pedagogical context more related to the school and to the teachers. So we had two discourses, the official discourse and then the uh, practical uh, or, or the field discourse. Now, indicators, we had two main dimensions in this study, the what and the how. The what is what we ask from educational educa uh, teaching sciences, and how is that implemented? And then the, uh, for the what, we had three indicators, scientific knowledge, uh, uh, general uh, cognitive capacities, and uh, research capacities. And the how, we had two indicators, interdisciplinarity, so related to scientific knowledge, how is scientific knowledge related, uh, is there, are there interrelations between uh, subjects in, or between simple and complex scientific knowledge? So we wanted to understand interdisciplinarity, which is very important in terms of demands, level of demand. And then the relationship between scientific and non-scientific knowledge to understand how can scientific knowledge has a status, a status in the different contexts, and if it was integrated into non-scientific knowledge that children bring to school. So we analyzed different documents. We started by analyzing the constitution of the country, the Portuguese constitution, then the basic law of education, which is the fundamental law of education. Well, these the uh, here the para parameters were too broad, were too vague. So then we uh, analyzed the specific and the essential skills, uh, competences, sorry, and the uh, curricular guidelines and the programs, the school programs, as they come from the ministry. And then we analyze them in terms of uh, textbooks and uh, in school programs. So I spoke about conceptual demand, but what is conceptual demand? Conceptual demand it has to do with the levels of complexity and the levels of abstraction promoted regarding knowledge and regard regarding cognitive capacities, general cognitive capacities and research capacities. But uh, conceptual demand also depends on how education and teaching are implemented. So. <clears throat> this is the concept we used in our study. So summarizing and before moving on to more 
uh, complex thing. So we had the two dimensions here, the what and the how, the indicators for the what, general cognitive capacity, scientific knowledge, and uh, research capacities, and then the how, interdisciplinarity, and then the relationship between scientific and non-scientific knowledge. The last indicator was subdivided, subdivided to understand what was the status of each type of knowledge, scientific and non-scientific knowledge, and what is the integration between these two domains, between scientific and non-scientific knowledge. So this was our study. So then we, based on uh, to, re to, to answer our research questions, we adapted some instruments from a working group that has concerned uh, with uh, these matters that has been developed since, developing some sort on this, the ES group. Uh, they have several works uh, uh, made in this, uh, at this level. So, uh, so I'm going to tell you about the instrument we used. We had one instrument for each indicator, one for scientific knowledge, one for uh, general uh, cognitive capacities, and so for all five indicators we had one instrument. So each instrument had very dis several descriptives and four levels. Four levels. I'm going to g show you an example. Uh, an example related to uh, research capacities. Because uh, the topic of this conference is the value of experimental knowledge. So uh, research capacity is fundamental for uh, experimental knowledge. So I have just a small part of the instrument to show you. So uh, degree one, uh, so this uh, degree one was a simpler, simpler. So observe, measure, disseminate, and then a little more complex than the simple levels is to compare and identify variables, to uh, record variables, to rank them. Then degree three, uh, analyze, research, interpret complex data, and control variables. And then complex uh, degree four, high complexity, to plan experiences, to solve problems. So based on these instruments, what did we do? So we uh, went to each document and we divided uh, the document into uh, units of analysis. And we characterized, uh, uh, characterized each one of them. How does it uh, work in terms of uh, each one of these indicators? <clears throat> so we subdivided each document and characterized them. So as far as research capacities, I'm just going to give you one example how we classified this. So we have one unit of analysis and we classify as uh, degree one because it appeals to observation. Observation of the world, microscopic world, uh, relating this knowledge with the invention of a uh, microscope. And so the suggestion is to uh, observe infusions uh, with a microscope. So the unit is uh, observation, observation, uh, observation of cells. But now this one, uh, degree two, speaks about comparing cells. So not just observing them, but then comparing them. So the research capacity is higher. Then three uh, asks for researching, interpreting data. It uh, makes relationships uh, between uh, uh, lists of data. And so uh, d degree number four is about planning, planning uh, research, small uh, research experiences relating the uh, constituents, the, the elements of the atmosphere with certain aspects of the life on Earth. So we, then we had results by uh, school year, by indicator, by uh, so many uh, variables. So I'm going to show you only the total results. Oh, if you want uh, detailed uh, results, then I can give you those detailed results. But I'm, I'm going to give you the total results for the what and for the how. For the what, this document shows the following. We have, uh, well, this is by document, the document of uh, essential skills. First uh, s s uh, level of schooling, second and third level of education. And then uh, curricular uh, guidelines and programs, and then uh, school books, and then uh, assessment forms. So, and then we have uh, the code of colors, G1, 2, 3, and 4, for the different degrees of complexity. Uh, so, looking at this, what do we see? We see that degree one is not so much represented in terms of essential competences, essential skills. So, it is uh, the, lev the level of conceptual demand is uh, higher. Now, uh, we go look at uh, school books, degree one increases. We look at uh, curricular guidelines, degree one increases. So 
uh, we go at the assessment forms, also degree one increases. So this means that conceptual demand is going down. So uh, now if we put, put them together, uh, if we put the different bars together, it seems like as we go up, the uh, level of demand goes down. So as we advance in the different documents, uh, the level of conceptual demand comes down. Then we have other levels, two, three, and four. Let's look at four. So we can see that level number four is represented to some extent, not very much, but to some extent, but it quickly decreases as we go to curricular guidelines and even more when we come to uh, textbooks and to assessment forms. So. Uh, if we isolate uh, the degree four, we can see that degree four comes down more and more uh, <coughs> as we move up the scale from uh, uh, essential skills to curricular guidelines to school textbooks and to uh, assessment forms. And it comes down even more uh, in uh, the second and the first and second degree of uh, schooling then in third uh, level schooling level so we can see that uh, demand comes down so this happens at all three uh, levels of schooling now let's do something else now let us cross cross information let us cross uh, our data. And so we have the capacities, the processes, cognitive processes, from the simpler ones to the more complex ones. And then we have the different types of uh, knowledge, factual knowledge, conceptual knowledge, procedural knowledge, uh, and metacognitive knowledge. So we wanted to understand in which cells would these uh, units of analysis fit. So our results show the following. Uh, for this cell, let me just tell you that the first result is also always for first level of schooling, the second result is for the second level of schooling, and the third one for the thir third level of schooling. So representativeness here is very high. Most unit of analysis are uh, in, this, uh, in this quadrant. And regarding the other... Uh, and then when we go to the curricular guidelines and to textbooks. Uh, so the percentage of this uh, quadrant increases even more. So the highest percentage of all uh, uh, fit here in this quadrant. Now uh, we go to the next quadrant. We see that uh, percentages come down. And then when we go to the next uh, uh, quadrant, we have hardly any uh, representativeness. So procedural knowledge is almost forgotten, namely in uh, basic school, in primary education. So again here we have uh, very poor representation of uh, documents, but still essential competences and curricular uh, orientation uh, guidelines appear to some extent in uh, the third level of education. So, so then we wanted to understand what was the percentage of uh, research capacities are seen in the different uh, documents. So for first, for uh, primary education, we have uh, the percentages here, and we can see that in primary education, the uh, competences and guidelines have a certain percentage of essential skills related to research capacities, a certain percentage related to research capacities, well, although it's not very high, but uh, uh, ranging around 30%. Uh, and then at second second level of education, it comes down, comes down a bit, but still in the document on essential skills, it still is represented to almost 20%. Then in third uh, level of schooling, only in the program and curricular or uh, guidelines does it appear to some extent, only 13%. So here this shows that research capacities are not very much represented uh, in the different levels of uh, schooling. So this is about the what. Uh, now, let us speak about the type of experimental knowledge we found. Well, I must say that we were quite surprised with the lack of quality of experimental knowledge. I'm going to show you some examples. I could show you many, many more. Uh, 
uh, unfortunately, but this is a textbook that says, that says, let us experiment. It is about experimenting, making experiences. This is part of natural sciences. Uh, and what is it is about making uh, musical instruments these uh, traditional musical instruments uh, that are used uh, in the countryside so the idea was uh, to play music so what type of experimental knowledge is this it's not experimental knowledge this is not about scientific knowledge this is about playing music so what are the variables being studied here I don't know what type of experimental knowledge, knowledge this is. Now, another type of, of experimental knowledge is here. This is for second, for second grade. This was an assessment form, and it says that some uh, gra grains of corn, uh, we are going to put uh, the corn in a humid uh, piece of uh, cloth and uh, then close it in a, grass, uh, in a, a glass bottle. Uh, a glass jar, but there's nothing said of you know what is in, uh, what is the intention, what is the purpose. Nothing is said about this. Then there's another experimental knowledge uh, test here that the purpose is to understand that uh, plants feed themselves through the root, and for uh, for understanding that they feed themselves through the root, uh, they put some water with salt in uh, the mineral salts. Uh, in the root. But this is a very, very poor experience, I must say. And so I have a, a small text. Uh, also, I talk from a textbook. And here we have about five or six scientific mistakes. The first sentence says that all plants have a root, a trunk, and uh, leaves. So again, it seems like only uh, the plants only feed themselves through the root and they only breathe through the leaves. So here, the small little square has uh, quite a few mistakes. Now, let, let, let us look at how, the, the total of how. Well, how, for uh, global terms, we have the blue uh, color is much more prominent, but uh, the uh, purple, uh, the purple uh, color is a little more represented than, than in the other uh, graph I showed you before on the what so but here we have something similar is that degree one increases increases from primary education to second and uh, third level of uh, schooling uh, both in uh, terms of essential guidelines uh, uh, textbooks and uh, forms <laughs> So now let us try to isolate the degree number four. Degree number four here on this uh, gra graph, we see that it is much more represented than before, much more prominent than before. It's a less dramatic uh, situation. And here we see that degree number four is more present in essential skills and less present in other documents. And here, the first cycle has less, uh, the primary education has less uh, degree four. So the level of demand is lower. The uh, third uh, level of education has a little bit of a higher representation, uh, slightly above uh, the other uh, levels of education. So I'm almost coming to an end, says the speaker. Now, if I would have to summarize, if I would have to summarize our study, I would say the following. I would highlight uh, the following things. Uh, by by uh, levels of education, I would say that uh, in primary education, uh, the how is more valued, but the conceptual level of uh, the level of conceptual demand is lower. But it has a greater percentage of research capacities uh, related to experimental knowledge. Then the se the second uh, level of schooling values very much the what, not very much the how, uh, the uh, level of demand is a little higher. And then the second, the second cycle, okay. sorry, this was for the third one, third cycle, sorry. They value very much uh, conceptual uh, demand is much higher. Uh, and, uh, but this, the second the cycle falls somewhere in between. If we look through documents, through the documents, we see that there is a greater conceptual demand, but there is much more ambiguity. 
we see like these major words that teachers have a lot of uh, hard, a hard time in understanding in understanding uh, those words and uh, and conveying those words into practical uh, teaching then in terms of the textbooks and the assessment forms we can see that the level of demand is much much lower but they do fulfill some activities uh, they do put some activities into practice it seems like textbooks have some use for uh, teachers then the last indicator i want to speak now about the most positive indicator we found which was that of status the relationship between scientific and non-scientific knowledge so status was always high the status of scientific knowledge i mean <coughs> the status of sciences the value uh, ascribed to science was always present against the uh, uh, the uh, indicator with the lowest uh, demand uh, is the relationship between uh, lowest level of conceptual demand is the relationship between scientific and non-scientific knowledge. There was no integration between scientific and non-scientific knowledge. Uh, now, as far as research question, our research questions, I think that w we r were able to answer the first four questions. But now let me speak about the uh, lack of continuity and or discontinuities and the consequences. So some s studies in, uh, support our interpretation. One of the reasons we find for this level of conceptual demand is that the general idea is that uh, in uh, primary education, we don't really need to promote uh, scientific knowledge and that children don't have uh, the uh, scientific development, the, the cognitive development for dealing with scientific uh, uh, matters. Uh, so this is like the general understanding there is. And uh, what is more valid is teaching mother tongue and teaching maths. So the idea for promoting success of students in primary education, namely those from uh, underprivileged backgrounds, is to bring down the level of complexity and abstraction. But uh, the opposite is shown by many studies. Uh, this, uh, there are studies that show that if we bring down the level of complexity and abstraction, we don't allow children from underprivileged backgrounds to uh, also come to uh, higher levels of complexity of uh, uh, learning and to un uh, understand uh, things of higher complexity and they will have no other ways of acquiring that uh, those those skills now another reason for this and this is related more with official documents in official documents we see that often in order for these documents to be developed they depend on many interests many conflicting interests many different agents and often often we have documents of very poor quality because of that so lastly in a lighter way but not uh, least important i want to highlight two key uh, points, two key ideas uh, from the study. Uh, primary education and teaching uh, uh, sciences in primary education uh, should not be uh, the only things to be studied. We should study other things. However, conceptual demand is a very re relevant indicator for the quality of our education. So the two key ideas I want to leave with you are, and to not, not forget, to lower the threshold of conceptual demand is harmful for students and especially is harmful for students that come from underprivileged social groups uh, preventing them from accessing essential skills for their future life lives and lastly uh, and i uh, would like to use this symbol of uh, sciences and the symbol of foundation uh, of the foundation and i would like to say that to develop the uh, conceptual demand is to improve uh, their cognitive development and, and this is about preparing them for a better future. Thank you.